Hello, in this video, I'll show you how to generate the JSON Web Token for OAuth so you can use the Google Play Developer API in a server-to-server -server application. To begin, you will need a service account to access the API on behalf of the user. Go to the API access page on the Google Play Developer console. Select Create New Project and click on the Link Project button at the bottom. Under the Service Account section, click the Create New Service Account button to begin creating the account. Click on the Google Cloud Platform link in the dialog. Make sure that the project is selected. Then click on Create Service Account. Give the account a name and continue to the next step. For the role, select Service Account User. Then click on Done to complete the process. Go back to the API access page and click Done to close the dialog. The next thing we need to do is to give access to the account to perform actions with the Google Play Developer API. If you want to allow all access, check the admin permission. For Google Play Billing, check the Financial Data and Manager Orders option. Then click on Invite User to complete the process. After you grant the necessary permissions, go back to the API access page and click on the View in Google Play Console button next to the account. Click on the account. Select the Keys tab. Click on Add Key, and then Create New Key. Select JSON, and then click on Create to create the file. The file should be downloaded automatically. It contains information about the account that we'll need to generate the JSON Web Token. Keep it safe somewhere and try not to lose it. If you do lose it, you'll need to repeat the step and create a new key file. After you obtain the private key for the service account, you'll need to create a JSON Web Token to request an access token to communicate with the Google Play Developer API. A JSON Web Token consists of three parts, a header, claim set, and a signature. Each part is encoded using the base64 URL encoding format and separated by a period. The header and claim set are a JSON object that contains information about the token, and the signature is used to validate the information when it is received by the server. Let's see how this is done in code. If you have not already, give the video a like, share, and subscribe to support the channel. To begin, create a new JavaScript file called JWT. Then create a JSON object called header. The header consists of two fields to indicate the signing algorithm and format of the information. Use ALG to represent the algorithm and then set it to RS-256. Add another field called TYP to represent the format and set it to JWT. Now for the claim set, create another JSON object called claim set. We use the claim set to provide some information about the token such as when it will expire, the time it was issued, what permission we want, and the service account we are using to access the information. Use ISS to represent the service account and set it to the account you have created earlier. Then add two more fields called IAT and EXP. IAT represents the time the token was issued. Create a new date object called now. Call the getTime function to get the time in milliseconds, and then divide it by 1000 to convert it to seconds. Then pass it inside the claim set. For EXP, 
It represents the time the token will expire. The maximum time it can last is one hour. Create a new variable called one hour. To get one hour in seconds, we do 60 to represent one minute. Then we multiply by 60 to get one hour. Create a new variable called expire time. And add now and one hour together. This will get us the amount one hour after the token was issued. Now pass it inside the claim set for EXP. For the last two fields, use scope and AUD. Scope represents the permissions we want. If we take a look at the documentation for the Google Play Developer API and scroll down to the bottom of the method page, it will tell us what scope we need to use to call a particular method. Copy it and set it into the claim set. AUD represents the URL we're using to get the token from. It is always going to be HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash of 2 dot Google APIs dot com slash token. Now that we have the header and claim set, we need to turn them into a byte array and then encode them using the base64 URL encoding format. To do this, create a function called to base64 URL with a parameter called JSON. Inside the function, turn the JSON into a string and store it inside a variable called JSON string. Then turn it into a byte array using the buffer class and store it inside a variable called byte array. To encode the array into base64 URL, grab the array, call to string using base64, and replace all the pluses with hyphens. All the forward slashes with underlines. and all the equal symbols with an empty string. Lastly, return the encoded string. Now create a variable called encoded header and call it to base64 URL function to encode the header. We'll do the same for the claim set. To create the signature, import the crypto module from Node.js. Then use the create sign method to create the signer object. The first part to getting the signature is to pass in the data to the signer object. Grab the signer, call write, and pass in the header and claim set. Use the period symbol to separate them. Then call end to complete the writing process. The second part to the signature is to get the private key that's unique for the account. It is located inside the JSON file that you downloaded earlier when you created the service account. Copy the private key and store it inside a variable of the project. Then grab the signer, call sign, 
Pass in the private key for the first parameter. Use space 64 for the second. And store the signature. The third and final part to getting the signature is to encode it using base64 URL. Create a variable called encoder signature and replace all the pluses, forward slashes, and equal symbols just like how we did it earlier. Once we have the encoded header, claim set, and signature, we have the JSON web token. Create a variable called JWT. And set it to the sum of the header, claim set, and signature. Then use the period symbol to separate it. If we print it out, we get some long encoded string, which is what we want. Now let's see how we can get the OAuth token using the JSON Web Token. Import the HTTPS module from Node.js. Define a function called getOAuthToken with one parameter for the JSON Web Token. This function will return a promise. Inside the promise, create a JSON object called option. We'll use this to provide some information for the request. Set the host name to OAuth2. .googleapis.com. For the path, use forward slash token followed by a question mark to start the query string. Set the grant type. And then set the assertion using the JSON Web Token. For the method, we'll use post. And for the header, we'll set the content type. To application. Forward slash x www form URL encoded. Once we have the option, make the request by taking the HTTPS module and calling the request function. For the first parameter, pass in the option. And for the second parameter, pass in the callback to handle the response. Inside the callback, add a callback for the data and when it ends. Then store the data inside a string. Call the resolve function from the promise to stop the promise when it ends, and pass in the resolve so we can get it. After, add a callback to handle any errors. And then end the request. To test this, create an async function called test. And call the get all of token function inside. Convert it into a JSON object and print it out to the console.
call the test function and run the app. Now that we can get the access token from OAuth, we can use it to access the methods from the Google Play Developer API. That's all for this video. If you find this video helpful, please give it a like, share, and subscribe to support the channel.